Well hello people, so Peter here, yes, we're back down in the old man shed, it's uh, Sunday afternoon, we're coming up to uh, oh, 4 o'clock, uh, very nice day out there, it's, it's not clear blue skies but it's very bright and more importantly it's, it's nice and warm, it's 20 odd degrees, 20, well we're looking at 22, 23 degrees, so perfect come down to the shed weather. <laughs> However, it is, what are we though, it is the 14th of July. Um, so next weekend I will be going to Chatham because it's the Chatham and District, hold up, the Chatham and District Model Railway Club and uh, they've got two days event next weekend and that's going to be at the historic dockyard in Chatham. So I'll be going down there on the Saturday, a very, quite a very big uh, show evidently and uh, I hope to see Kevin. Uh, so yeah, that'd be good. So I'm doing that. Uh, however, so it is the 14th, um, the results, you, by the time you watch this, uh, we might know what the result is, <laughs> England versus Spain, oh my god, so that's this afternoon, um, god dear, if my blood pressure can take it, god dear, as, as the King says, they haven't, you know, <laughs> not made it easy for us, have they, oh dear England, but anyway, come on England, alright, <laughs> good luck to you guys. Um, quite a lot actually going on today, sports-wise. There's the Wimbledon final, which is why I'm down here, because I'm not bothered about tennis. Um, unfortunately, Eurosport, they're covering the Tour de France, which I do love. I do watch the Tour de France. But their other sport is the tennis, so they're not showing the World Superbikes going on, which is live today, only unless you uh, subscribe to their premium channel. So, yeah, missing out on that. But I, I do like my motorsports, you know, so I do like my Tour de France. And of course we got the football. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, someone tried to kill Donald Trump, assassinate Donald Trump. Oh, oh blimey, eh? Crikey. Uh, but I've come to, you know, I've come down to the man shed, all right? So, you know, I'll go back to see the football this is shortly, but if I can stand it. Right, anyway, Model Railway, Torridon Road. What have I been doing this week or since I last done a video? Um, in the video, you will see the fact that the I've um, uh, been able to convert the Curascal uh, nuclear flask wagon over to pick up power from the track, so I don't have to worry about the batteries anymore. So that's done. Um, there is a new wagon on on the uh, which you'll see going around, which is called uh, what is it? It's called an, uh, a JPA wagon. They're the new rate of wagons I've got going around. And uh, again, it's been successfully, you know, sort of one of the first things I do is get the, because I bought a rake, you know, the last one is all the couplings removed and uh, put an end lamp on the end. Which, so that's all done. A bit of a faff doing that one, it wasn't straightforward, but it's done. And, um, but otherwise, what, um, in doing that, when I finished, I thought to myself, well, how many wagons and, tra you know, or, uh, trucks and things like that have I actually put an end lamp on? working on Torridon Road and um, I've, so what I did is I made a video of them all okay so uh, just to, you know just showing them all quickly in operation every type of um, uh, wagon uh, carriage uh, coach you know that I've uh, put an end of train lamp on I've made a little film of them working and it turns out I've done personally for my own self I've got I've got 31 wagons done um, two of which I didn't bother to film because they've been put away. I mean, the other one was the nuclear flask that was the Backman one, uh, which is the old brown wagon. So, yes, I put an end of lamp, train lamp on that one, but it's already been put away. I didn't bother to get that one out. Uh, the other one was um, Regional Railways 158, um, but I've already did a, you know, I shot a 158 reg um, on, in a Scottish... Uh, local 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 uh, rail livery i think it is so i've done one of that so i didn't bother to film that and i've done a couple of other models um for um the beckenham and west wickham model railway club for um greg you know so he's got them running around on these layouts um so yeah so quite a lot so I'm, you know it's 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 my thing to do you know i must have an end of train lamp working so that anything running on the layer, if it's an end of a train, you know, if it's the end of a rake of wagons, it's got the lamp. If it's been hauled by the rail operations group, you know, uh, as a as a drag, um, the last coach in that lineup, 
will you know no matter, even if it was a powered unit would have an end of train lamp and uh, normal coaches if they're the end of the rake you know yeah got an end of train lamp on all right so yeah so i've done that uh something else i've done uh looking again i've got two unique class 37s that i have operating on torridon road one not so much because she's been put away um and it is the they are the 37 nines there's two of them i've got they they both started off uh in the ralph freight gray liveries with the large logo they both look like that when they first was produced so backman do, does one and uh I, the other one is one that I converted. All right. So, and then the reason, the story behind them is, is that I think it was back in the eighties. There were six class thirty sevens that was taken off duty, had the had their engines removed, and then fitted with experimental engines because you know uh, British Rail was after the next generation of uh, locos to pull you know to pull the fleet around you know the 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 country and to be classed as class 38s all right so yeah the class 37s let's test the engines and call them class 38s so two of them were fitted with a rushton engine and four of them was fitted with the merley's engine and the difference that you would see is um the backman did make the mold for the rushton engine so you can actually buy a ralph 8 gray liveried class 37 in the number that was for the Rushton engine, experimental engine, okay? Uh, and you will see that the, on the mouldings, and you'll see this on the film, that they've only got the one exhaust, right? This is why it's unique. They don't sound like other Class 37s, and I will start them up on the videos for you as well, so you can hear. So they've only got the single exhaust on both of them. And on the Backman uh, moulding, you can sort of see where they sort of uh, replicate the fact that they plated over the double exhaust that should have been and you've only now got the single and I think so to get the sound right you can't have a normal class 37 sound file on there because it's a unique engine and Lego Man Biffo does the Rushton engine sound file so that's what's fitted with that one the second one was the Merleys so she looked like her sister in the Ralph Freight Grey to begin with but because it was fitted with the Merleys engine the Merleys engine was a marine engine and it was actually tall, taller than the um, both the Rushton and the standard engines fitted in the Class 37. So they had to modify the roof, all right? And they, they didn't go ballistic and, uh, you know, redo a new fantastic-looking roof. They just literally got planks of strips of uh, steel and everything and uh, plated over the top, okay? So it's a totally different style to the rest of the roof on the 37. And I replicated that in the Ralph Freight grey version which on the film you will see I've just got the body shell now that I've got and I put you know so showed that alongside the Rushton engine and it was with my own scratch built roof that I tried to replicate what they'd done with this particular loco now bearing in mind you know I had no engineering plans I was just looking at YouTube videos to see what the roof looked like and I was just trying to you know sort of replicate it and I didn't I don't think I did too badly because what happened, the reason why I haven't got that body running around on the loco now is because that particular loco is running today on today's tracks in uh, um, owned by the company Europhoenix. You know, that's the company that rent out the Class 37s to the rail operators groups. You know, so they've got that lovely Europhoenix, you know, the logo on the side, you know, the grey and the red and the, the silver, OK? And that's the colours that she's now wearing today, running around on today's tracks. So of course I, because I wanted it, you know, to uh, create the same uh, model for my layout, I got a, a Europhoenix body. Had to, uh, got hold of the, there is a, a, a model roof out there, a photo etch roof kit that you can buy that replicates the roof of the Merleys Pioneer. It involves having to heavily modify a Class 37 body shell by cutting the roof the, you know, out to drop the new roof in okay you know so you've got to make up this this uh you know edge um etch steel uh etch um what is copper plate thing whatever it is uh photo etch roof where you had to build it up and then and then fit it into the loco so i did all that guys all right so my 37 is looking like what she is today well eventually it did because first of all it had the Europhoenix scheme done so i've done that 
but it was running around with black bogey frames and then the uh, on the, the the company kept on releasing details of how they were looking after this loco so next thing it had refurbished bogey frames or bogies so when when they'd finished refurbishing them she came out of the uh, the workshop with repainted bogey frames so you got the red springs You've got the yellow end caps on the end of the axles, and uh, so for oh, I mean, my, mine were all black, so I had to get the paints out and paint them black and the yellow. And I thought that's all right. Next update, it's got snow plow fitted. Didn't have a snow plow. No, they've gone and fitted a snow plow. So I fitted a snow plow, and that's that had the standard um, chain link coupling over the front. Okay. Then she was seen uh, being uh, worked on, you know, doing tests on the main line always paired up with another 37 or something so he was wondering how well she was doing well anyway she must have been successful because now another update she's seen in a drag and she's actually doing sort of drag duties where she's built, pulling a, a rake of I don't know what you know 308 or something or other uh, and in that photograph it's shown now that the uh, the centre um, snowplow section has been removed the chain link coupling has been removed because they've fitted what's called a Delna Delna coupling. Okay, that's the sort of um, the Delna couplings is what you see on a modern multiple unit low um, you know DMU EMU. It's the ones that they just clamp together, you know, and that's it. So she's she's been fitted with that, so she can now and and she was seen doing drag duties. So I had to do the same as myself. So I cut off the centre section. I've got 3D printed versions of these Delna couplings uh, and so I fitted that and again so that's what I've been showing you on the film right so you see the you'll see how they originally were one is still the same the Rushton is still the same to this day it's not been scrapped it's kept somewhere I don't know where some preserved line I guess somewhere or other but she hasn't been scrapped I have everything else the, all the other ones have the apart from Merleys the Merleys Pioneer they're the only two out of these six experimental 37 nines they were called um, that still exists so one is actually still running today as a Euro Phoenix uh, looking uh, loco so that's what I've done uh, yeah so that's it so um, lots of you know uh, pictures of uh, videos of that showing you that um, but otherwise that's it and just running clips featuring heavily the 56 the Cavalex 56 it's an awesome loco, really. You know, I mean, they. Oh, that's something on me. Phones come up. On uh, anyway, but uh, yeah, I mean, all credit to Cavalex. I mean, it's a fantastic loco. The sound file, you know, it's just brilliant, brilliant. So I do use it a lot. The the class sixty sixes. Obviously, I didn't go the secure scale route because I've got six Hattons ones that are all working absolutely fine. And incidentally, people, if you have got the new Acuriscale Class 37s. Well, you have a look. Hold on, let's have a look. Right, let's bring one down from my shelf. This is a Hatton's one. But if you've got the Acuriscale version, have a look at that front rail, all right? That's underneath the cab lock windows, all right? This, this white railing, okay? Can you see that it actually goes in, it's actually attached to the front there, underneath the windows, right? But then the second point, it should be attached to under to next to the buffer okay i've seen so many videos of people sort of saying oh it's absolutely perfect absolutely. and this thing is sticking out at the wrong angle okay it just needs to be bent back a little bit of super glued let you know each side to to keep it in place otherwise you know yeah you know well, fantastic I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. it's only a simple little thing but because I do own them and because I went through a lot of trouble with getting these six that I've got all in working order, to see the new ones being sold, it's only on a couple of liveries I've noticed, you know, but people are showing off their new Acuriscale 66 is saying it's fantastic out of the box, nothing's wrong with it. Well, yeah, nothing's wrong with it, but just correct that little bit of detail because it seems to be some liveries, um, they've stuck that rail on and they haven't made sure that the, the bottom of the rail is into the bodywork, it's, it's, sticking, it's sticking out. All right, just me being a rivet counter. All right, <laughs> you know, but but you know, it's, it's great that the lo this particular loco is running excellently. So that's good. I mean, my 37s are all, you know, everything's running well now on the Torridon Road. So I'm over the moon. Right, well that's it, guys. So um, as I say, good luck, England. Oh, 
by the time you see this film it's probably all be over and dusted we're either either couldn't care less or we're trying to drown our sorrows i don't know but still um yeah but otherwise yeah show next weekend be going to that looking forward to that but otherwise everything's hunky-dory and uh, just enjoy the clips there's quite a lot of clips all right but um I can't remember what I've done now, <laughs> so you have, to, you have to keep looking at them. All right, guys, so love and leave you. Until the next time, you all take care. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye, guys, bye-bye. <laughs>